of stuff to make sure it loads up properly. Cool. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Uncanny Creations with me and Lawrence today. <laughs> uh, I was going to wear my hoodie with that thing on it because it is now my favorite piece of clothing, but it is too hot to do that right now. So. <laughs> Um, welcome. We are doing Uncanny Creations tonight instead of our regular game. Um, and we are going to be going over makeup tips, um, for how to make a really cool look. Um, and I'm going to go over some basic principles for you that you could kind of apply to like any character or look that you're going to be, um, making. And then we're going to experiment with some very low cost, uh, battle damage around the facial area. So it should be fun. Um, did we wanna do any announcements, Lauren? Lawrence, we didn't actually discuss this beforehand. No, we didn't. We got caught up on other interesting conversations. We did. Were awesome. we did. <laughs> so as far as announcements go, uh, make sure that you guys are tuned in to Gooey Den of Enlightenment, uh, just because that's where the latest Gooey Cube stuff goes for our Dungeons and Dragons stream. That re reoccurs next Tuesday, and then we only have periodic little breaks as we have you know actors go and be sick and different things like that um so luckily this one was a planned uncanny creations night it wasn't a accidentally somebody got sick uncanny creations night um so stay tuned for that we have read watch event that goes on would you guys just had a episode last week we just had an episode last week um we were discussing um the reincarnationist papers uh, which is an, has been turned into a movie called Infinite with Mark Wahlberg. And all of us universally just vented the whole time because it was a decent book that went into a what the hell was that movie? That would, what? Uh, so if you want if you want lots of us just being very perplexed at how how that book became that movie, you can go watch it because <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever encountered a movie that was more different from the book. Like to the Have point you? where I saw the first, I saw the first scene and was like, did I read this wrong? Was this the right, is this the actual, is this the same story? Did you ever read Starship Troopers? Uh, no, I have not read it, but I have but seen you it. saw the awesomely mm -hmm. bad 80s movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be one I'd be interested to get your perspective on as far as being different, because literally they already started the production of the movie, and then they get time the rights to Starship Troopers. So they literally just like use the name, the like the same names, and that was it. And so it was, uh, it's pretty great if you look at the differences. I'm super excited for next month's though. Yeah, so this month is going to be, um, this month is going to be, I know what you did last summer. Um, which is a YA horror novel that was written back in the eighties. Um, so we'll tie a little bit back into our YA discussion that we had a couple that we had last month um, and talk about just the emergence of the horror genre. Um, and I didn't realize this, but haha, -ha, there is a, there's a new, I know what you did last summer uh, TV show coming out. So if you want to watch that to add into the discussion bonus points. Um, but then in November, we are going to do Dune. So Start reading now because Dune is a freaking long book. <laughs> um, and we'll be discussing the latest rendition of Dune uh, that is set to come out at the end of October um, in November. So I hope you will join us for those discussions. And um, I hope you will be thinking about what kinds of books you would like to hear in the, you would like to discuss into the new year. Um, because we kind of like put this together, but we'd also like to see like, what do you guys want to discuss? Have, is there one that you've seen that you're like, what even was that? And you want us to talk about it? We will. Um, yeah. So let us know, message us, uh, comment, like post, share, carrier pigeon. I'm still waiting for someone to send me a carrier pigeon. I just, I, I have locked onto that idea and eventually I'm going to get a carrier pigeon. That's you understand it. how difficult that is, right? I realize how difficult that is, but but you know what? We can send people to the moon, so. You're not wrong. <laughs> what would really be hilarious if, if somebody like, or not, Amazoned you a pigeon that just flew out of a box. <laughs> <laughs> like a poor pigeon. <laughs> yeah, pigeons are barely animals though. Like, let's all be real about that. <laughs> My parents wedding uh my aunt got my got them both um a box full of doves 
that they that like to release when they were walking out of the church and uh all but two of the doves like left and the two doves that were do that like didn't leave like they just refused to leave the box they were like now bro i know fine. what's out there i want to go back <laughs> to the place fine. where the food is <laughs> just take me back to my place i'm good <laughs> 100% um audience please let us know if you can hear us correctly it looks like we are up on twitch youtube and facebook uh you should be able to hear music if the music is stepping over us or if you can't hear us or anything like that let us know so we can make sure you have an enjoyable watching experience cool um all right so the first thing we are going to do is i kind of gave lawrence some homework to grab a few things and uh we're going to see we're going to unbox what he got to see if it is what I described. To see how well I described what was supposed to be happening. <laughs> um, For the record, this homework assignment came last night at like 10 o'clock. It's true, because I forgot to tell him to go get stuff. <laughs> like, why doesn't Lawrence just have like a whole makeup drawer just ready to go? I mean, I don't know. All right, so the first, let's see here. So the first thing was a blush palette. Okay, I could um, not find a blush palette but I got this thing. Perfect. And I got this thing. Perfect. Okay, so what you have there is great. So a lot of blush palettes these days are kind of like this. They'll have a bronzer and they'll have a blush. The two different color blushes that he has there are great for creating shade. So if you're ever shopping for makeup that's not just gonna be on your face every day, but you're wanting to make some more of a dramatic character thing, you want two shades of it a lighter shade and a darker shade, because that way you can create depth um, or extensive bruising or burns. Because think about it, none of those things are monocolored. Those things are different colors. So you need a couple different colors. So fabulous. We have two different colors of blush. For the audience, I got natural and berry mauve. Perfect. <laughs> And there's zero reason, guys, especially if you're doing this for like something, something like a one off, you don't have to spend a lot of money on this. Um, Lawrence said that all of the stuff that he got was about thirty five dollars. Um, and I think if you if you were to like do it at the dollar store, you could probably get it for even less. I did do it at the dollar store. <laughs> Never mind. I did, I did that for a lot of things. So I didn't realize Family Dollar isn't really a dollar store. No. Different. No. So I did go to Family Dollar and then was like, what? So anyways, it's all true next time. <laughs> um, all right. So the next thing was uh, lip liner pencils and eyeliner pencils. So lip liner in these. dark red and eyeliner in brown and white. All right. I got this one, which is natural. Cool. Is this the brown? Yep. That's the yep. little, little berry. Yep. This one which was in, hold on, I know this thing, it was dark lip liner, smooth plum. Perfect, brilliant. Uh, you really can't see the color on that. Okay, and then the last one I got was white. Perfect, okay, so lip liners and eyeliners are great. They're basically colored pencils that you can use to draw on your skin. Um, you can create designs on your skin. You can do the traditional just eyeliner. Um, you can create freckles. You can create cuts. Um, you can create all sorts of stuff with just a few different colors. And these are the standard colors that I would recommend. Um, yep. You can get black if you want, um, but black is not going to be a natural thing. Black is going to be something that's more like decorative for your eyes. Or if you're creating a really highly stylized look and you want like cracks in your face or something. But otherwise, you're going to want to go with more natural, naturally occurring colors like brown, uh, purple, red, um, and white. We're going to use to shade things. Nice. Um, you can get these either as just like a pencil, and you um, use a, pen a regular pencil sharpener to sharpen them, or they have some that like twist out. Um, if you're getting the really cheap ones, they will die after I don't know a couple of years. They don't die fast, but they just dry out, and then it's hard to like make them draw on your skin. Um, but they typically last a couple of years. So, all uh, right. Next thing is primer. Primer. I got that. Yes. Fabulous. So primer is super important for your foundation. If you don't have a good primer on your skin, the whatever you put on your skin will tend to start to move very quickly. Um, the instant you start sweating, 
it's going to, it's going to start bubbling with the sweat. Um, the instant you like smile and make extra lines in your face, um, your makeup is going to start moving towards those lines. So you want to get the primer to sort of smooth out your face. Um, and this is particularly important for guys who usually, um, are not spending as much time daily on their faces as women. <laughs> um, so you're going to need a little bit of an extra thing for the makeup to actually hold on to, to balance your skin just a little bit. Um, it, ladies, if you're going to do something intense with your eyes, um, I do recommend some kind of eye primer. Um, this is a slightly different consistency than the stuff you're going to put on your face. Um, this one I got in a, um, birch box, which if you're wanting to try some higher end stuff, anybody, I do recommend getting like the free, the, the discounted trial of birch box or Ipsy, or I think, um, L'Oreal has L'Oreal Lancome, a bunch of different makeup carriers are doing the subscription boxes and they'll send you great stuff and you can answer their little, um, their little questionnaires to basically specifically ask for what you want. Like, don't say you're interested in everything because then they'll just like throw whatever in the box. But if you're like, no, I need moisturizer, I wanna try primer, and I need a really good uh, couple eyeliners. Like, just be interested in that and they'll send you that. Nice. So it's cool. Um, and you can get like $200 worth of stuff or $300 worth of stuff depending uh, for like 60. Cool. Yeah. Um, I don't keep it as a subscription because I do not need that much makeup every month. It is just, I don't go through it fast enough. Some people do. Um, all right. The next thing is a dark brown bronzer, which I'm not sure we were able to find. Um, I found a mosaic bronzer. Perfect. Okay. So I have one of those as well. So the mosaic ones, they're designed for you to be able to take a brush and like swirl it all around and it gets it all mixed up. And I don't know, it's supposed to be pretty. But the reason I like these <laughs> is because they they actually sort of segment stuff out. So like this particular one is my brown and I use it a lot for dirt. And I've got, this was a dollar store one and I've got three different colors of dirt there because I don't have to blend them all together. And they have a white for a highlighter. Nice. Um, so those mosaic ones, are great if you're trying to um, get something inexpensive and save some money. And then I said matte eyeshadow in purple, green, and brown. Okay, I don't, I got this eyeshadow, but Perfect. I'm pretty sure it's the metallic one. That's okay, we can work with that. Actually, that doesn't look too metallic-y. It doesn't say metallic, it says glamorous. <laughs> glamorous, okay. So you can tell if it's metallic if it's got like, if it's got like glitter in it or it looks shiny. Okay. Um, so there's a couple different things that you guys want to think about when you're picking up your makeup. When you're creating a look on your face, if you're not actively adding prosthetics, what you're doing is you're adding color just like you would on a two dimensional paper to create shape. So if you're using your shiny um colors to try to create a dark shadow the shininess is going to make the shadow less intense does that make sense yes that makes more sense cool so um when you're shopping if you want to do something that's like super ethereal and like fairy-ish and whatnot feel free to experiment with those um with those metallic colors those should go on top the stuff you're doing on the bottom by and large should be should be matte if you can Satin also should work. It's a little, it's a little shiny. Um, but also if you're not doing anything in super intense lights for like a photo shoot or anything, you can get away with the metallic. Okay. Um, oh, and then starter brushes. So here starter are. brushes. Woo, perfect. Little kit like that is absolutely perfect. Um, so, and those you can usually get pretty inexpensively. Um, if you like doing makeup and intense looks, I um, suggest investing eventually in some more expensive brushes or just get a couple birch boxes and they'll send you all the brushes you freaking need. <laughs> um, the way you tell a good brush versus a bad brush is going to be whether it is natural fibers for the, for the brush or synthetic. 
Um, you can make synthetic stuff work. If it's white, if it's a, if it's an unnatural color, it's probably synthetic. It's probably plastic of some kind. Yeah, it doesn't say. Um, there are high quality synthetic brushes that you can get that will be just fine. Um, but the synthet the synthetic brushes will last not quite as long. Um, they tend to not hold the makeup quite as well um, as a natural brush. Um, and they kind of usually just fall apart quickly, which if you're just doing it for a couple times, doesn't matter. Um, but let's see here. These are the shapes. The, the ones that he had in that starter, basically any of those like starter packets that have like four or five brushes, those are going to give you the shapes. There's not a right or wrong set of brushes to have. It's just sort of like, how do you like to use your brushes? If you paint, it's a very similar thing. How do you like to use your paint brushes? <laughs> um, what shapes do you use? One thing I will say to pay attention to is, um, let me see if I can get a good example. How dense is your brush? Um, the reason the density of your brush is important. So this one is kind of a, come on. Just wants to look at my face. This one's kind of a medium density brush. Um, it's not super full. Um, versus this brush. Which is going to, it has much more like bristles per square centimeter, right? The bristles are just really tightly together. Um, if the tighter the brush, the, the bristles are together, the more pigment they're going to hold for you. Um, so if you're wanting to put in something super intense, you need something like this. If you're wanting to blend two colors together, you're going to want something like this. Um, nice. I, I have multiple brushes of the same shape because I also I don't like to clean them off before I change colors. Nice. <laughs> That's one thing that if you are experimenting with lots of colors, you're gonna wanna either clean your brush in between, which then makes it wet, which then makes it difficult, or you're gonna wanna have a couple different brushes that you're using that you're kind of either going from light colors to dark colors, so it doesn't matter that you are changing colors, or you want separate brushes for separate colors just like paint. Um, I think that was all. Oh, and then this one. This one's just my favorite because it allows you, it's just, it's, it's just a tiny little like sponge tip, basically. Um, and it allows you to turn any powder with a little bit of water into basically the same thing that you would get in one of these. You can create many colors of eyeliner for yourself with this if you do a little bit of water and you put it over skin that has been primed. Nice. I did not get that one. That's fine. Um, we have we have these, so we don't need them. Um. Okay. Cool. Lawrence, do you have any questions before we start? <laughs> yes. The one last thing that you forgot was this one. Oh yes, the foundation. Okay, fabulous. So foundation is what preps your skin. Um, so I am curious to see how this foundation looks on Lawrence's skin um, because I don't, uh, I don't think that he tested it, which is totally fine. You can't test the stuff at the dollar store. Like it's all sealed so that everything is like fine. Um, if you go to stores like Sephora or Ulta, they usually have testers, although that has kind of changed with um, COVID. COVID. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, it's possible that they will still give you a tester to take home. Um, back when I was in California, I needed to, um, I wanted to test out a couple of different kinds of makeups for some photo shoots that I was doing and I was required to get a spray tan but I had to buy my makeup before I got the spray tan. So what they did was they gave me a couple of different shades in these little Tupperwares um, so I could try it. That was really nice of them. And I never had to go back and actually buy the foundation. <laughs> but I, I didn't have to, but I did because I actually really liked the foundation and I continued to do the stuff. Um, but knowing your color is gonna be important. If your color is, if your foundation color is off, you are literally changing the color of your face. 
Um, one of my favorite memories in Russia, I studied abroad in Russia, in St. Petersburg. And St. Petersburg is home to some of the fanciest ladies in the world. These ladies would power walk icy, muddy, cobblestone streets in five inch spike heels. Like, I did props. I do not know how they did it. Uh, yeah, I was walking around in little like three inch heels that were not spikes and I was, they were intense. Uh, but I remember seeing this one lady on the Metro and she had this, she had like a beautiful face of makeup on and she was wearing a very expensive coat and you know, her hair was done and she turned away from me to go out the door and the color from here to here was like 75 shades different. Um, so if you are going to get a different color and you want to change the tone of your skin, you can, if you need to, um, if you don't want to do like a spray tan or something, if you just want to do it with foundation, you can, but make sure you take it all the way down because <laughs> otherwise it just looks like you got a mask on. My so, favorite in Ukraine was the ladies at the gym that had a full face of makeup on to work out. And it was like, whoa, that's amazing you're not sweating right now. I'm worried about what's on your skin. It's a lot of primer and buildable foundation. Yeah. Um, oh, that is the other thing about foundation when you are picking it. So um, I think the one, does it say if it's um, if it's buildable or? I remember when I read it, it said buildable. Cool. So when you're looking at your foundation, there's a couple of different things that it'll say. But one of the things is whether it is light coverage, medium coverage, full coverage, or buildable. So light coverage is going to be stuff that you would typically want to wear for like every day that doesn't actually like do much other than kind of give you a little bit of a tint. Um, it's not going to cover up blemishes. It's not going to cover up dark circles or anything like that. It just kind of smooths over your skin. Um, if you want to keep, if you have natural freckles and you want to keep those, that'll blah. Um, medium coverage is in between medium and full. Full coverage is what you think of when you see like the Kardashians. They are on, they have full coverage makeup with a bunch of other stuff. Um, but it's like you've completely changed the, the the texture of your skin. You've completely changed the tone of your skin. And you are just in full control of everything that's happening here. Mm -hmm. Buildable is the more flexible of all of those because you can go from light coverage if you just apply one coat to full coverage by applying more coats. Mm -hmm. Um and that's basically what you need. Uh, you, it'll also tell you whether the foundation is like shimmery. It, it should have like, I don't know, if it has like a cream finish or something, that means it's shiny. So you will kind of glow. If it's a matte finish, it's gonna be matte. It's gonna be not shiny. Um, and it will tend to look a little drier. Okay. Um, experiment with foundation. All right, so let's open up this foundation. Actually, before we open up the foundation, let us have Lawrence uh, put on, I've already done this. You're going to put on, um, the primer. So we're going to open okay. up the primer and have you, um, take not a lot, like a, a pea sized amount. It's <laughs> my opening. Uh, quick question. Yes. What should you, so like I went ahead and I washed my face before mm -hmm. I did mm -hmm. this. Yep. I didn't have any soap because I'm a dude and we only have one soap for like dishes, body, hair, car, you know, just the various things. Um, so I just like got some hand soap. I <laughs> just did that. Is okay. there like a proper, it, should you wash your face before? Does it matter? Yes, you should. Um, especially if you're going to be wearing it all day. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't wash your face before, everything that is currently on your face is now stuck underneath the primer and will move. Um, so if you have sweat under there, if you have dirt under there, it's going to create, it's going to either create texture that you might not want, or it's going to just prevent the makeup from sticking to your skin. Nice. Um, also fun fact, I saw the same hand soap that I bought during Christmas time. So my face smells like gingerbread. Ooh, <laughs> All right. You said a little bit of this. Yes. So like, uh, just, <laughs> Um, so you want to just take it and usually what I like to do is just like dab like a, a small dot here, 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 here. 
Perfect. Where else? That'll work. There's not like a specific like magic spot. It's not like, um, it's not like Reiki or chakra points or anything. You're just putting it on your face. Um, and then just, just rub in like circular motions to get it all in here. <laughs> um, not the eyes. You can put it on your eyes. It's not going to hurt your eyes. Um, typically, you want to be gentle around your eye area, especially if you're going to be wearing makeup often because your eye skin is very thin and very delicate and will stretch and like you can damage it. So just be careful around your eyes. But typically, makeup products are not going to harm your eyes if you put them on your eye. So follow up question, just because yep. you probably don't know with this. So it is late in the afternoon, so I got a fair amount of stubble. Do you think that's going to affect the makeup? It will affect it a little bit, but we're not going to worry about that a ton. Um, in fact, I was actually going to play around with um, like emphasizing it a little bit. Cool. So you don't want me to take a 15 minute break to go shave real quick? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so primer is on. Fabulous. So ordinarily, I would recommend you wait five or 10 minutes, let it sink into your skin. But since we're just doing this, we're just going to go for it. So, <laughs> no, you can't push it into your skin. You have to let your skin take it in. Well, maybe not with that attitude, you can't. <laughs> you don't need your stomach to make your stomach digest faster. It just does the thing. So just let it be. <laughs> Roger that. All right, um, so five to 10 minutes, let it sit. Yeah, or it should tell, uh, it might tell you. Five, but as soon as your face feels dry, then it's like usually pretty good. For um, dude reference, it's the same amount of time that you put the spices on your pork butt and let it sweat out. Okay, um, so now we're gonna do we're gonna just do a little bit of foundation. Cool. For the for the moment, um, typically if I'm going for a natural look on foundation, um, I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna like tap it around my eyes um around and on top of my nose and then blend it out from there um if you want something supernatural what that does is it just makes this part of your face right and the rest of your face just kind of blends into that okay um do you have you have the egg yes i do use the egg okay um you can also use your fingers to apply foundation that's perfectly fine i find that if that it's harder for me to move the foundation with my fingers than it is with like a brush or an egg. So. Ooh, it has a little mirror. Oh no, it doesn't. That's clear. Hi world. <laughs> Hello everybody. <laughs> All right, use this end, pointy yes. end. Yes, you can use either end. The pointy end makes sense because it is the shape of your eye, so it'll help you. Okay, and just kind of like do this thing. Yep. All right, and then you said nose. Yep. So along the. Along the nose. It's actually not a bad, no, yeah. Good shape. Okay. All right, and then where else? Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna like, so what you're gonna do, Yep. we're just gonna like rub it along your nose and then along, gently along kind of your orbital bone. Um. When do I know to re-dip? Uh, re-dip now. Okay. Um, you, I, for this purposes, I don't think you're gonna be able to go too heavy with it. Cool. Like I think, because what, what we're wanting, and you're going to be able to see this better than than me on your camera, but what you're wanting is you're wanting to create an even skin tone. So your skin tone right now is a little bit red. Mm -hmm. um, and I can see a little bit of a difference between the skin directly under your eye and the skin kind of on your cheek. So okay. let's hit that area and try to even it out just a tad. And while he does that, I'm going to talk to you guys about shading because all of makeup uh, application is really just sculpting with light. So when we last talked, we talked a little bit about contouring. If you've ever watched any videos in the last like five years, you know about contouring. You know, there's 75 different ways to do it. Every celebrity has her own way that is the right way. And you know what? The only way that is the right way is the way that you like to do it. So. Um, what? It's not looking. Is it so looking? I do I do have very red skin audience. Mm -hmm. um, like that's the Irish in me. So the uh, natural 
kind of uh clashes very much so i'm just kind of working it I'm also working it with the light i I've, it looks pretty even from my end i would be be very you can push like you can push this in um like you don't have to be so careful with it across your skin you can push it and you can sort of dapple it because you want that foundation to actually like stick to your skin and yeah. if you see streaks go ahead and just sort of rub with like a little circular motion and that'll like even out those streaks gotcha i think i'm pretty good yeah i think that's looking fine okay we're a little bit more even and guys you can kind of see i can definitely see the application like under your eyes yeah um if we were doing more we could get like we could if we were taking more time we could like completely change his skin color. Right now we're just gonna go with an even skin tone. Boom, done. Crushing this. <laughs> okay. So, uh, sculpting with light. Okay, so what I wanted to do is sort of progressively um, beat our faces up with some makeup looks. So we're gonna create a little bit of a sunburn, although I'm not quite sure how this is gonna look on Lawrence's face because it's already a little bit red. Uh, we can we can emphasize the red though. So. Sounds good. We're gonna create a little bit of a sunburn. Um, we're gonna create a little bit of like sunkenness, just like I'm hungry and uh, you know tired, t hungry and tired, and not I mean not quite starving because we can't really change the shape of our face, but give that implication, right? Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and create a bruise and a cut. Cool. So for like a sunburn look, you're gonna wanna take your blush. Okay, blush. Blush. And forgive me, I'm gonna get my light on here. Um, so sculpting with light. When you're putting makeup on, you wanna be aware of where your natural light would be coming from. Typically light comes from above and hits you down. So your nose, your forehead, um, everything that's forward on your face is going to typically be brighter than everything else, just because of the way the light's hitting it. Um, for sunlight, obviously the sunlight hits you across your nose. So if we're building a little bit of a sunburn, we're gonna wanna take that pink and yep, yeah, Lawrence, just like that. We all know what the sunburn looks like. And what I want you to do, instead of like taking a straight line, yep, there you go. Take it across, cause it's gonna be across the side of your face. I'm, I'm hoping that this is actually dark enough to show up. Mm. This is my amazing cosplay palette that I got on Amazon. It's like, I don't know, I think it was 20 bucks. Um, and it's got a million colors. I'm gonna pull a darker pink than the one that I was using. There we go, see? All right, so Lawrence, yours is, I'm seeing a little bit of um, lines, so Instead of, don't dip, don't dip your brush in it anymore. I want you to just use the brush that you, the, the stuff that you have and sort of ease off those edges so that the edges kind of fade into your skin a little bit. And as you're putting this on, you can kind of just imagine like, like you know where you sunburn. This is, <laughs> you're, I don't know what you just said. Sorry, that's because I was muted. No, I don't pay attention to like, after I'm done sunburn, I'm like, all right, cool. Like the only way I know that I'm sunburned is like, oh yeah, that's part hurts. But I don't like pay attention to how it affects my skin. Ladies, you know where you sunburn. Yeah. Um, all right, so oh, wow. this is a pretty intense sunburn. My, whatever my character is, is going to have some fun times. You are like anime sunburned is what you are. Yeah. 
Um, but so it's on the top of my forehead. It's on the top of this. It's on my nose, all the way down my nose. Actually, it looks kind of like I'm sunburned. Yeah. So con consider where this light is. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you don't have a brown. Blush? Have yeah. I have a natural. The natural? I don't think that's going to be dark enough. What I want you to do is I want you to take the... Um, I want you to take the brown that's in your eyeshadow palette. Okay. Brown in my eyeshadow palette. It's just over here. And use the brush that you were using for the blush. Okay. Um, and we're going to create a little bit of like hollowing in your cheekbones. Okay. So, you know, you know, uh, you know where your cheekbones are, right? Yeah. Let's go where my dimple. Basically. Yes. So we're going to start back at, back at the ears. Okay. Um, and we're going to create a shadow that goes underneath your cheekbones. And the idea is to kind of hollow out this area. Um, don't pull it too far forward. I'd say, don't, so start at your, start at your ears and bring it to, bring it about halfway down your cheek. Yeah. About to there. So let me give you a demonstration. Nope. I go full at okay. it. That's it. Yep. So you'll notice one of the reasons I like this brush, this blush brush, is that you can actually like shape it with your fingers. And Lawrence, you can do the same thing with yours. You don't have to just use the shape that it is. Ooh. So. Buff it in there. Um, and as you're creating that shadow, See how it now has changed the side of my face? This side yeah, is still okay, pretty yeah, round. Yeah. This side now looks a little bit like it's sunken. Yeah. You can go ahead and you can find all the places where your head naturally sinks. So we've got this over here. We've got this little temple dimple. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep it on just one side so you guys can see the difference. Okay. Now for yeah. you, you're not going directly across. You looks like you're coming down at an angle, yeah. Yes, so you follow your you follow your cheekbone and your cheekbone, um, you're, you're kind of wanting to create, the line that you're wanting to follow is like from the tip of your ear to where your mouth is. Um, and you can make it you can change the angle to sort of change the shape of your face. Okay. Make sense? Yeah, yeah I see it. Should I go ahead cool. and nail my dimple? What? Should I nail my dimple? Don't put it in your dimple. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, because because your dimple, if you were if you were like starving, your dimple would probably be gone. Okay. Um, the other fun thing you can do if you have brown stuff and you want to just be like, I'm out in the wild, literally just take it and do a little bit of painting with your fingers. Now we've just got dirt. Can I make it a, a suggestion for that? Yep. Just because I've been out in the wild and I get dirt on your face, you're going to yep. get dirt on your face wherever you're wiping away sweat. Yep. So... So if you're naturally doing this, for me, I'm a nose sweater a lot. So I get a little like mustache frequently from rubbing it out and stuff like that. Um, so, yep. So yeah, so wherever you want to put it, I would, I would think character wise. And when you're designing makeup, think, yes, where would you naturally put it? And also think um, where will look artistic for your character? Because real people out in the wild, they do not look glamorous. If you want to go for like, I am actually <laughs> over out in the wild and I was dropped in the middle of nowhere and I don't know where everybody is, then you can go for that. But if you're going for an artistic style, which usually cosplay is going for, I don't know that I would do a shadow right here. A hundred percent. I get that. I'm just throwing it out there. 
but yes, no, generally speaking, you want to do it and you want to kind of like, I've gotten, I, I sort of, my first one was these two like fingers right here. Mm -hmm. And so part of the reason this is not showing up is because this is not, this is not, uh, So I will say one thing that will help out your camera slightly is just go into the cam mic settings, go to advanced and set it to 720p. It's probably set to 420 right now. Oh, okay. Surprise. I don't know why it doesn't do. If I had known that it only did 720, I would, we would have done this in uh, uh, stream elements. So that way we could have got the full 1080p. Shift. Uh, okay. Cam mic, camera, show advanced options. It doesn't give me that. Oh, that's oh great. It does. yes, it does. I'm lying. <laughs> um, hi, Def. Hello, everybody. That's a little better. Cool. So now my face is all messed up. So that's. Now, did you do, did you do red up here? I did for my sunburn. Mm, okay, I'll do that. Um, you can put your red wherever you want. Um, here's a fun thing that you guys can do while Lawrence is putting additional stuff on his face. Um, if you don't want to experiment on your face, if you want to kind of like give your design a design, you can make yourself a little face model just like you would draw yourself a person. And you can take the actual the actual makeup and um, create a, a pattern for yourself on paper. This is great if you are going to um, like create your design and you need to be able to recreate it exactly. You can label all of this stuff. Um, or if you're gonna need, if you're doing it for like a cast of people, your whole D&D &D group is going and you're the one who's designing everybody's makeup. This is how you give them a map to tell them what they need to make, what they need to get and where they need to put it on their face. Fair enough. Fair enough. Cool. Let's do a bros. Cool. Right. So, um, we've got my hollow. We've got my hollow over here. Um, in my nice, pretty face over here. Mm -hmm. Um, which eye do you want to do a bruise on, bro? Left, because it's far easier to do everything on my left, because that's where the camera and I can see. <laughs> okay. So. To create a bruise, um, if you're doing a bruise on your like eye, um, I want you to sort of, if you're not familiar with your face, get a little bit familiar with your face. And maybe even like put your hand there or something else and see where where is this contact happening. Um, it's gonna happen on your orbital bone. It's gonna happen on your eyebrow. Um, that's where any like cutting would happen. And then the rest of the bruise is going to be into the skin and it's going to kind of, it's going to kind of originate from this orbital bone right here. Yeah. So um, when you're creating a bruise, bruises are fun and they are usually many colored. Um, so if you're creating a bruise, I recommend having um, green, purple, and brown. Um, if you don't have green, green is like when the bruise is several days old. So if you just have like purples, browns, and some blushes, you can you can make a bruise that's just perfectly fine. Um, so oh, I cut this out. Um, so Lawrence, get one of your brushes. One of your brushes. This one look good. That one looks just fine. Um, actually, let's get one with a little bit more brush. Cool. So the one that we have right there is really good for very specific placement. Um, can you try, do you have one that's kind of like this? It's a little bit fuller. I don't, I go from this one to this one. Cool. Um, let's go with Let's go with the, the not giant one then. Cool. I can see what my girlfriend has because I still have that though. Um, we can do this with any size brush. The other thing you can do is you can also do it with your fingers. It's really whatever you're most comfortable applying with. My girlfriend apparently doesn't use brushes. That's fine. <laughs> um, so take your brush, whichever one you would like, Lawrence. I recommend that one. Yes. And let's pick uh, what color. I let's. We're going to start with a purple. Cool. 
Um, do you have several colors purple? Can I see nope. your really quick? Just one? No, 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 that's fine. It's fine if you don't. That's I just wanted to ask. Um, ew, we do have some great colors there though. Okay, so we're gonna start with that. We're gonna start with that purple. Cool. And I'm gonna kind of follow along doing a similar thing. So we're putting this along our orbital bone. Uh, I see you're dabbing, you're not stroking. Yes. Um, and it's a little bit easier with a with a larger with a larger brush. If you have a hard time, if you finding if you're finding that your brush is taking too long to apply, Lawrence, you can take this thing, your mm -hmm. big floppy one, yeah. and squish it. That's what I was trying to do. Yeah, you can absolutely do that. Um, I am the king of like grabbing a paintbrush and then just going at it. So, cool. But I'm going to take this into my, right into my eye. Um, you had a darker, there we go. Um, if you can, I know um, the dollar store often has, here we go. The dollar store often has, eyeshadow palettes that um, have just several different shades of purple, several different shades of green, um, several different shades of brown. Having a light, medium, and dark version are usually really helpful for creating these looks. Where do you want the darkest to be? The darkest should be along your bone. Okay, so let's try. Because that's where, that's where the impact happened. I'm going to go rogue and I'm going to get a tiny bit of black here just to darken it up. Oh, that's not rogue. That's absolutely completely accept acceptable. Um, and, and if you don't have enough, a variety of colors, adding black into whatever colors you have is a fabulous way to do it. You can also add in other colors. You can add some brown. And then um, you said that the dabbing thing is to blend it, right? And the other thing you can do, which I should have done before this, but I didn't, uh, is you can look up pictures of actual bruises and, and try to recreate that. There's no reason that you have to do this kind of from memory. Um, geez, Lawrence, that's fabulous. Yours is looking really good. Yep. It does need to blend a little more, so I'm getting a little bit purple. Yep. And this is where... Honestly, it's a little bit of trial and error. Like you're gonna have to create some, you're gonna have to do some experimentation to see what works best. Use different sizes of brushes so that it can um, blend differently for you. And mm, there we go. And make sure that you're also adding in different colors. So you have a green, I would recommend mixing in that green at some point, maybe not right now, cause yours is looking pretty good. Go. Um, but the green goes around the edges and it creates that sort of like sick, like mm -hmm. the bruise has been there for a while. All right. So you want to know a secret, Chloe? Yes. One of the reasons why I wanted to do this makeup thing is because there's a character at the end of chapter three that is going to visit Dan. And I want to do the uh, black light makeup. So that way mid RP, I can throw on black lights and completely change the character. That's cool. Spoiler alert. Um, if you have your right, is it um, thing, you don't need to do this. I'm actually, I haven't done this before, but I'm gonna see if I like this. Now, do you think green around the outside edge or the inside edge, like underneath the eye, uh, eye eyeball? Um, so your green is going to be, let me actually, I'm pulling up a picture of a bruise, guys. Nice. Just tell DM to come out here. He probably has one. <gasps> he does not. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm going way too 
easy. Way too deep. <laughs> no, way too, way too, um, way too soft on my colors. Oh yeah. So here we go, Lawrence. I'm gonna um, send these to you real quick. Okay. Sounds we, good. Send it to me on Facebook. All right, guys. So if you guys, uh, I sent it on the private chat. Oh, okay. All right, guys. So if you want to do this uh, with us, you can just Google black eye. That's all. I and what you're going to notice is what we're doing here um, is way too light. Not dark enough at freaking all. Um, so there's a couple of things. If you have cheap makeup, which this palette is inexpensive. Um, and I know Lawrence's is inexpensive as well. If you oh, have damn. cheap makeup, um, you kind of just need to layer it a lot and make sure that you put a lot of primer on underneath. Um, I put some on, but not all of it. Um, I'm going to do some more dark purple and we're just going to go in on this eye. Now, I do have a quick question for you. Yep. So let's say, for instance, that I go too heavy and I want to come back. Do I do another color to get back or is there just removing it or what's the plan? So if you go too heavy, um, it's a little bit hard to get it off mm -hmm. because light makeup doesn't usually uh, cover it. Mm -hmm. However, if you have a foundation that matches your face, we can take this. So like, I don't actually like this thing that I'm doing up here. Mm -hmm. So And I've been blending with my fingers, so make sure, oh God, it's so bright. Make sure you're not blending with the fingers that you were using your makeup on. That's part of the reason why this is a weird color. But you can use foundation to sort of neutralize the color that you've created. Excuse me, I'm gonna go wash this off real quick. <laughs> I will stay here and I will entertain you. So I'm kind of, what I wanted to do right here is I wanted to go a little bit darker. One of the pictures that I saw, so that like some of the, um, just because you have a bruise doesn't mean that's entirely purple. There are various bruises that based off the blood vessels and stuff like that kind of change it up. So what I'm doing is I wanted to kind of go light with a streak in here. And this, I want to go with like a green or a yellow to kind of um, differentiate different skin and blood and stuff like that. So uh, the one that I, the bruise that I had before, I was actually pretty happy with. I would have rolled that to a cosplay um, any day and been proud of it. Um, and then Chloe and I will take pictures and put them up in the den as far as what our, or not not the den, but our Facebook page, just to kind of show you what, yeah, that actually looks not too bad. I think I'm going to go ahead. I don't think she went over this, but I'm going to try and like blend the whole thing together just by taking a brush over it. <gasps> Unboxing. Hi, Chloe. Hello. So I took a look at this under a different light and I realized what's bothering me about what's coming out, what's happening here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to turn off this, this bright light, first of all. Something. Second of all, okay, that looks a little better. So part of the problem that I'm having with mine, and especially with this dirt that I've created, is that it is shiny. So it is fighting, it's trying, like the color is trying to create a shadow but the shine is fighting with it in the camera. So it is actually reflecting light and it looks different in this camera than it does in real life. I so, promised everybody we'd take pictures afterwards and put them up on the Facebook group. Yeah. Um, so keep that in mind. If you're struggling, you may have uh, makeup that's too shiny. I'm gonna do a little bit more purple. I'm actually pretty happy with mine. Um, one thing you can do um, that you'll be able to see when I have the, uh, when I put this up, I'm using my, my lip liner to create kind of like a, not, not a cut quite, but like, you know, it's like the, almost the cut. It's kind of bloody, like bloody stubble. Yep. All right. I just want a very general darkening of this. Let's see how that's looking. 
Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Yep. Cool. I'll call that a win. Brilliant. Okay, I'm turning this back on because I've got uneven. Oh, actually, let's see. Is that even? Yeah, no. What I'm really not liking about what I did is I don't like my um I don't like my streaks, guys. But it's fine. <laughs> um, okay, so Lawrence's black eye is actually friggin' fabulous. Mine is not showing up great on camera, but it does actually look kind of freaky in person. Um give me one second. I think I'm going to add just a little bit. In. Also, also sneak, sneak peek, peek for everybody. everybody. We are going to do a uncanny. Oh, I'm getting an echo from I think your area there, Chloe. I didn't change anything, so I'll, I'll mute. probably. Yeah, I'd say just muted in between stuff, just because you have your speakers on. So it ends. Um, we're going to do an uncanny conversations because I had a uh, apostrophe the other night, and I was like, you know what? I want to talk to some actors about some stuff. So we're going to get Dan on, we're going to get Chloe on. And uh, we have a special guest that we're going to try and get on to. We're not quite sure who they are yet. And uh, we're going to talk about some fun, interesting stuff to help hopefully dungeon masters and players approach role playing from a little bit more of a thespian kind of point of view. Um, that's one thing that's very interesting from a dungeon masters kind of point of view to when you're setting up a scene. Um, I don't know that a lot of dungeon masters approach it the way that I do. A lot of dungeon masters kind of have what information they want the characters to get out of the NPCs. They have what uh, maybe tension they kind of want to put on. Uh, but at least for me, what I do is I actually talk to each of my actors individually. And I say, hey, where do you want your character to go? What challenges do you want them to kind of go through? And how do you want that to develop? And then one, with that information, that's where I approach each NPC and I try and say, okay, what is going to help Kenna become more mature and kind of grow in her kind of space? What is going to help Colopia kind of help face some of these insecurities that she has? Um, and I think it makes for a more rewarding experience from the actor's point of view. Uh, but I kind of want to talk to some other actors and kind of see what their opinions are. Your black eye is looking great now, by the way. You are muted. I'm more happy with it now. I added, you guys, I've got like three different colors of purple here and I have my lovely lip liner creating like a wound almost here. Um, this is too heavy and it's mixed, unfortunately, with the shiny stuff from my dirt. So it looks a little bit odd, but uh, in person, it's not looking bad. All it right. follows the blood vessel of your orbital bone as well, which is yep. great. Um, so yeah, I'll, moral of the story, look at reference photos. There are plenty of them. You can design your own fancy wounds and uh, make it as, as weird as you want. Let's do a cut. Cool. And uh, Lawrence, I'll let you pick wherever the heck you want. Um, I'm gonna do one right down here because I did this last Halloween and I just liked how it looked. I wanna do a split lip and I'm gonna start with that. Cool. Okay, so I want you to take your, your pink lip liner your blood colored lip liner. This is the heart of your cut. Um, and you can draw whatever the heck shape you want your cut to be. Okay. Um, so. I think this one's more red, okay. Um, as you're drawing it, make sure that you're not um, doing it like perfectly straight. Make sure that there's some, ooh, that's great. Make sure that there's some imperfections and um, Always do a little bit and then you can make more. God, you know what? It looks like it sells blood in it. <laughs> yep. Okay, so once you have your initial like cut tree, and mine is very fantasy-ish. This this is not how an actual cut goes over your eye. 
Um, I just like how it looks. <laughs> um, okay, so now you have a cut. On, on the camera right now, it looks just fine. Um, and probably if you're looking at it in yourself, you're like, ah, it's bloody. Um, in order to fill it out, what we need is to give it dimension. So you're gonna pick the, the side that is like closest to facing the top and that side you're gonna line with white to create the illusion of a little bit of a, a little bit of a raised situation. Closest to facing the top. Yeah, so like this one that you have over going over here, Lawrence. Yep. It's it's angled. Yes. So the top of that angle needs to have white on it. Yep. Okay. So we're gonna go, we're gonna just basically trace it on on one side and it just has to be consistent. Um, have you guys have you ever created like a, a 2D drawing where you did like light and dark shading? If you have hundred percent brand new to me. <laughs> if you haven't, uh just go with if it's on the top, if it's on the top where light would be coming down and hitting it, that's where you want to put your light. And you're gonna put it beside, you're not gonna color over the red, you're gonna put it beside the red. I'm gonna try for you guys. I'm gonna try to do this in the camera. This is so hard. Yeah, get in there. Okay. Now, for my lip, that's basically vertical here. Would I just do the right side? Just, yeah. Now I know why bathrooms have so many lights. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm guessing there's going to be some blending that goes on. Not really. Well, um, let's see here. Yes, after we're done. Okay. So then the next thing you need is you're going to take your brown eyeliner and go along the other side. Okay. Um, and I don't have a brown eyeliner. I have this thing. Shame. Shame. Okay. Well, now because you've said that, actually, <laughs> my hat, I do. It's actually an eyebrow pencil, but whatever. Isn't this an eyebrow pencil? Mm, it might be, or it might be eyeliner. They're the same thing. All right. Go. That looks freaking creepy. Looking great. Right. I'm gonna. Oh. I'm not gonna hold this. I'm just gonna show you guys when I get done. So give me a second. Sure. Very fun learning all this. I'm now gonna have a whole bunch of makeup that I have to explain to my girlfriend that I bought for a cosplay thing. And uh, not that some other chick just came over and dropped $30 of dollar store makeup. I mean, would she really expect anything differently of you? I feel like she'd just be like, okay. No, she's well aware of how nerdy I am. So that's pretty easy. I did have a really funny exchange today where I walked into our S6 office. X6 stands for Section 6, and they deal with all of the computers and stuff like that. And I was like, all right, nerds, I got some questions. And they're like, I'm insulted that I, you'd call me a nerd. I was like, first of all, you're not even on my level. So let me just establish Calm that. Calm down. Right <laughs> you are talking um, to the master nerd right now. So if you guys can see, so we've created we've created some depth. My, uh, my white is a little bit thick. Um, and Lawrence is white. The white on your on your top eye is not bad. On your top cut is not bad. The white on your lip is definitely a little bit thick. Yeah, it just came out um, that way. That's fine. So I would take if for this stuff because it's kind of hard to blend. I mm -hmm. would honestly take like a um, a Q tip or maybe even take the very very tip of the the egg that you have. Oh yeah, that one would be perfect. That's actually the perfect thing. Um. And just like blend that white over into the red a little bit. Tap, right? Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm mm, here. like this. Boop, 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 boop. 
You're just trying to gently soften the edge that you've created so that the stuff all blends together a little bit better. I will say when teaching a novice this, the technique for moving makeup is helpful. Yes. So the more you, the more you guys tap, um, instead of just do, like doing a full line, the more control you're going to have over where everything goes. Dang, Lawrence, you look fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you guys can do these over any color. If you're do, if you have done body paint, you can still do this. Um, if you if you've done body paint, um, maybe think about what color bruising would look like on that color body paint. Maybe it's different. You might need to do some work on that. Um, but you can create these little like wounds whenever the heck. Um, and the nice That's thing funny. about yeah, the, well, the nice thing about about this stuff is that you can kind of mush it and then redo it, and it'll be it'll still be mostly okay. Nice. So um, that's what I got for you guys. Lawrence, do you have any questions? So many questions. Um, so kind of to recap, so just general makeup stuff is that you put light colors on the high parts. Mm -hmm. um, or sorry, dark colors on the high. Yeah. Dar oh, no. Dark <laughs> is for flattening for camouflage. So it's reversed. Dark is for <laughs> creating shadows. That's right. So you put it underneath. So you put it in the hollows of your cheeks. Mm -hmm. You put it in the hollows of your eyes. Yeah, it creates yeah. a shadow, an That's artificial right. shadow. I have to think of the reverse because in camouflage, you put the darks on the high points and you put the lights on the low points to create flat. Oh, yeah. So it's exactly the opposite. Yes. Cool. All right. So dark where you want shadows, light to kind of lighten it up. It's be easy. Mm -hmm. um, multiple colors, blend them together. Dabbing is for blending. Yep. To help create more of that. Manipulate your brushes by pinching them to get exactly the shape that you want. Yeah. Let's see here. You can, the most helpful thing I thought was take a piece of paper, draw a face. Yep. And then make, test out your makeup like that. Yep. You're not wasting a bunch of makeup this way. You can kind of create, you know, mm -hmm. you, you can, you can uh, improvise and you can give it to somebody. Is there, out of curiosity, is there, um, I like, I'd imagine if that's a thing that there should be like a website where you can print out your skin color and kind of get a better, is that not a thing? Maybe? I haven't heard of that. Skin okay. colors vary so much mm -hmm. and, um, and they change. Um, I oh, have three different colors of foundation just because my skin shifts that much between summer and winter. Okay. Um, really? So... Yeah. Oh. And um, I like to, I don't want to, I don't want to buy new stuff every time. So I actually have um, a, a shade, a shade that's pretty close to my normal, but then a shade that's much darker um, and a shade that's much lighter because that way I can custom mix whatever the heck I want. Okay. Um, um, let's see here. Time. Make sure you use face primer because it'll help mm -hmm. everything stick. And then I think I saw some sealant. Yes, you can if you want to. And did I bring it? Um, I'm a huge sweater, so that's why it concerns. Yes, if you're doing this for a con or something, you are going to want some kind of setting, either setting spray. Mm -hmm. catch. Doesn't want to. Oh my God. Right now, it looks like it just says sex. See, oh, wait, S -E -S -E -A. There we go. Yeah, this is Tarte Rainforest of the Sea uh, 4 in 1 Setting Mist. So you literally just take this and you like spray it on your face and it helps set the makeup. Um, there's also powders that you can get that are clear that you just put on over everything. Um, these are great if you want it to last for a long time. Um, and if you're a sweater, okay. uh, I mean, they're not going to completely prevent it from moving. If you sweat a lot, that's just unfortunately the way that physics works. So but, the follow-up question to that is, let's say I'm a big sweater. I put on the sealant. It's at a con. I'm working. So I start mm -hmm. sweating through the makeup. Is that a, like, mm -hmm. wipe it all away, redo it from scratch? Is there, like, a way to, like, touch up? It depends on what you want to do. 
Um, I recommend getting all of your pictures first thing when you get there because your makeup and your hair is going to be freshest uh, the, like the whole day. Um, if you have intense makeup and you're doing it for a competition, don't put your makeup on until right before the competition. Um, because basically as soon as you start, as you put it on, it starts deteriorating. Um, however slow or fast that is. Mm -hmm. Um, if you know that you sweat a lot, um, it is kind of hard if you've done something kind of intense, like we did with a bruise and a, and a scrape, it's a little bit hard to redo part of it. You can touch up these colors. So if you bring like a small pouch, um, you can always sort of put more on, mm -hmm. but if stuff gets smudged, like you forget and you sneeze and you're just like, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have to take it all off or just be fine with it being smudged. Okay. Um, it, it's a it's a lot to put it back on because you have all this stuff. So if you did, if you weren't carrying all the stuff, I do recommend having in your pro, in your um, security bag just like a bag of um, makeup remover wipes. Mm -hmm. You can get them at the dollar store, um, and that way, if something does happen and you're like, oh man, I look terrible now, you can just wipe it all off and you know just be you in your costume. Or with maybe minimal makeup that you brought, you can put on foundation and maybe like a little bit of a scar, but nothing intense. Nice. So I guess the actual other question I have, just because I think it's relative to what's going on right now, is masks at cons is probably not mm -hmm. going to be a thing that goes away, well, away for a long time. Yep. So has there been anything like I know I think we've all seen that mask in the freaking shopping parking lot that just looks like somebody painted makeup on the edge of it. Like, have there been any tips? Has been anything that you figured out about that as far as, you know, just for, for our people going to cons, what makes sense? Yep. So there's, um, there's unfortunately not a great way to just like keep your mask from absorbing your makeup. It's just going to absorb your makeup. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the nice thing is you don't have to do this part of your face. <laughs> You're just doing your eyes. Um, so that can save you on makeup. Um, the other thing that I would that I would suggest for that is maybe like design your costume around yeah. that. Like figure out some way for it to be part of the costume. Um, a lot of characters could do that, and you can come up with like a really cool looking mask that incorporates everything you've got going. Um, especially since usually eyes are what's going to be most interesting about whatever you've done with your makeup. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's not like you're detracting unless you have something that's got like incredible prosthetic teeth or a giant beard or something like that. Yeah. Um, so I would say, you know, just figure out how to do that. I know you can custom order masks that look like your face. So I don't know why you could be able to custom order masks that look like your character's face. So you could do that too. Um, like send the Etsy store. There's tons of Etsy stores that do it. Send the Etsy store a picture of you with full makeup and be like, this is what I want the bottom half of my mask to look like. Um, and they can tell you if they can do it or not. I'll bet you they can. So if yeah. you really have an intense look and you want that, um, yeah, I would recommend taking a look at that. Um, but other than that, just find something that goes with your costume. Makes sense. Awesome. Cool. Well, that's all the questions that I have. And now I have a bunch of makeup I got to figure out what to do with. <laughs> You'll use it. I will. I have one cosplay that, well, technically I have two cosplays I'm working on. One is completely blue face. So doing a garooned and stuff. So I'm going to get with L, work on some of that whole body paint um, aspects of it. But after you put on the body paint, you still have to do all of the expressions again. Yep. Uh, and the, so, the colors that I had you get, the brown, the blues, the purple, the browns, the purples, the, the pinks, those are natural, like, mm -hmm. living thing colors. So, yeah. And then uh, just the other secret character that hopefully I'll pull out at the end of chapter three. So, Hello. super excited for that. All right. Thank you so much for letting me be. Am I an uncanny creator now? Yep. Congratulations. Yay. <laughs> super excited. Uh, Got to take selfies real quick before I forget to post up on the den. Yep. I'll grab some too. Sweet. Um, and we will see you guys next Tuesday for our regular adventures. Excellent. You guys all take care, folks. All right. We will 